everybody. Welcome to the Becoming Podcast. Before we get going, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Jim at DreamInc.eu and the Boutique Hotel Leonardo here in Portal. So, call out to you guys. Thank you very much. Today it's uh, just me and I'm going to explain a little bit about what I do, where I'm from and, uh, and share some information what I think is going on around the world uh, with us. So um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Jamie Brown. I'm originally from New Zealand. I've been overseas living in different countries more than I think I've lived in New Zealand. Although I have tried to go back there a few times but it keeps on pulling me back over, over the side of the world for one reason or another. So I've been living on and off in Mallorca here for about 12 or 13 years and uh, after selling my health retreat in uh, Fitianga in New Zealand, I uh, decided to do some diving, as I do, and uh, I was diving in Fiji at the time and I picked up a magazine and it showed an article about the UKSA and, and yachting. Um, I had all my miles, so I went and did my, my yachting certificates um, and ended up here and yachting was my sabbatical because I was in the health and wellness and uh, industry for a long time before that. In fact, now it's been over 40 years since that I've been doing this. So it's been, been quite a while and I've created you know, quite a bit of uh, knowledge in a, in a lot of different areas. So I've been based here, but I work with people from all around the world. I'm a shamanic energy medicine practitioner, but I bring in all the trainings that, that I've that I've had and that I've done, and that started off in my in my twenties with sports massage, and then got in with with a lady who taught me a very wise woman in New Plymouth, um, called Isabel Russell, um, taught me Q12 energy work. Nobody really knew what that was at the time. So, um, but they knew what Reiki was. So I ended up doing the Reiki course, which was, was pretty much the same from there. Um, I had my own gym in New Zealand, uh, American Council of Exercise uh, personal trainer, ACE trainer. And so I was doing that for, for quite a while and then started to broaden my horizons. I was doing a lot of marathons and triathlons at the time and I found that the mental side was a, was a huge part for a lot of us. So I got into clinical hypnotherapy and sports psychology, studied in Los Angeles, in Glendale, uh, worked there for a little while before moving to London. London and had practices um, on the West End, Harley Street, Regent Street, um, the Hale Clinic. A lot of those uh, listening to this will probably know those centres. So I was working there for a long time. Then, uh, as life does, it opens another doorway and uh, came to Spain then looking for properties to start a health retreat. Didn't find anything that was suitable, but we found one back in New Zealand. Went there, did that for five or six years, and then went selling that had my sabbatical in the yachting industry. Um, I was here, the yacht sold, and then the COVID pandemic came along, and that's when I was called back into the therapy side. Uh, the shamanic energy medicine who I trained with, Dr. Alberto Vialdo uh, from South America, worked with him and he integrated all of my sort of trainings all together. So it was a mixture of the, of the energy work, of the, the crystals, uh, the homeopathy, the herbal medicine, um, and it just brought them all all together when I'm when I'm working with people, which was really uh, has been really beneficial for the for the clients that I've been working with. And when I'm working with the clients, it's not just one on one. Um, I, I do groups, um, I do rites and rituals and ceremonies. We do full moon ceremonies and uh, a few other rites as well. Um, but really just enjoying doing the ritual side and bringing people together for that side of things. So that was that was really, uh, really interesting side. Um, and work with people all around the world. And technology today has allowed that to happen. I've worked with clients through Zoom and it's like praying or many of the other things there. It still works, it still gets in, depending if, if it, even on the other side of the world, it, it, it comes together. So um, working with people at the moment in uh, Miami, um, Australia, uh, the UK, and uh, I've had one, I've just finished with one in India. So um, I'm getting tremendous results. And really what I am, I'm like a flute or a, a hollow bone. So it sort of works through me 
and I get information and I share that with people and it's on a, on a quite a high spiritual level um, that we're working on. So, you know, working with the people, find out what's going on and then start to, uh, start to get to know them and to work on the energy centers. Um, a lot of the ones I, I'm working with, some of them uh, have general, what we call general conditions, maybe like the health issues, um, could be weight, could be um, addictions I'm working with, with alcohol or drugs, or near suicidal uh, people as well. So it's not just the, the people who may have day-to-day -day issues, but those that are really desperate to, to work. And then I've found that the work that I'm doing is, is really helping them, and they are helping themselves. Uh, they are ready for this move and this shift and they're doing that and that's that's so really important. And it's like I did a post the other day and it's on YouTube and it's on, uh, on my blog as well about the momentum tunnel and we're moving along in a certain direction and it's really controlled by fate for most of us and fate can be fatal. You know, we have chances and opportunities and sliding doors as I like to say open to us and if we don't look in or have a look we could stay on this on this one path and that could be family history of of cancer or family history of a, a certain illness that comes in um, although some of them now become more prevalent um, this could be in our genes and unless we change something then that can stay with us for our whole lives and what we're trying to do, or what we are doing, is moving that momentum and bringing in new tracks, new areas of our life that we can look at to make these changes that are so beneficial for us. It's like if you're driving in a pickup truck and you've got a, a big uh, washing machine on the back and you're going 100 kilometers an hour and you see the turn off and you want to take it too fast, you might be able to get around that corner, but the fridge or the, whatever's on the back could fall off. And this is what happens to a lot of us, is that we need to, to slow down and make changes in our, in our speed, the way that we're doing things, um, in our mental, physical, emotional, spiritual aspects of our lives so that we can make a lifestyle change. The, um, the London uh, College University did uh, tests a while ago and they say it takes for most people 66 days to make a lifestyle change and this is what we look to do is to bring it into our lives, into our lifestyle. So the first 20 do, 22 days are hard. You know, it's like if you're getting up in the morning, I get up really early, as a lot of you know. Um, but to get up early, the first 22 days are hard. You have to maybe have an alarm clock set uh, to, to get yourself up, and then it's hard to get out of bed. It's that battle of the bed, or, or if we say the mind over mattress, which, uh, which gets a lot of us, and, and it still gets me from time to time, not very often. Um, so the first 22 days are hard. The second 22 days, Get a bit messy some days you've got the enthusiasm and you get up early and you're really going for it other days you think oh well yeah no maybe i'll just sleep in today but then the end of that the last 22 days is when you have the lifestyle changes and this when it becomes a part of your life so at the end of the 66 days this is a new part of your life for me, getting up in the morning, the first thing I do when I'm, I'm getting up is uh, after going to the bathroom, uh, I make myself cacao, so I have a cacao ceremony. Um, I am meditating, I do yoga, and then depending on the day of the week, I either go for a run and a swim, uh, or I go to the gym. So this is how I change that around, and I'm finished by usually seven, just after seven in the morning, before my family are getting up and about, and then I've, that's, that's my time. That's my time to sit down, to slow down. If there's any journaling I'm going to do, I can sit down, and it's nice and quiet, and, uh, and that's my time from there. But it's not just about throwing yourself in and doing all at once, because you will ricochet but it's making these small changes. And that's when I'm working with people as we're looking at these small changes. The people that, are, that I work with, uh, they come in to see me and it's the shamanic energy medicine that, that they are known for. So they come in, we talk about what's bothering them, that what's going on in their lives, what they want to change. And then from there, I'll have them lying down on, uh, on my massage table, uh, fully clothed. I put a, a blanket over them from there. 
I open up sacred space all around them, which is the second sacred space which I've opened, so it's all very protective. And then I use a pendulum. It's um, a um, Egyptian brass uh, pendulum that I use and go over each one of their bodily chakras, their seven bodily chakras, and I see whether whether they are in alignment, whether they're open or whether they're blocked and they're closed. Our first three chakras, pretty much for everybody, one, two, three, or all three will be blocked. I mean, these are our, our survival chakras. These are the ones that, that um, we're concerned about our safety, about the food, about having a roof over our head, and about reproduction. Our first three chakras, so there's generally always something in that area that, that is blocked. When I'm working with, a, with the, uh, the pendulum, well, we call what we have a, a wide mouth. So if the pendulum is going round, or I have it on a bit of string, and it's going round in a nice wide mouth, then I know that chakra's okay. Sometimes it's dead stopped, and that's blocked totally. Sometimes it's side by side, or forward and back, or going reverse. So it's different levels of the blockers that they have in that chakra area. And that's what I start to work with from there. Working behind their head on the deepening points, the release points, clearing the chakras, and then illuminating those chakras, resetting them, getting them going, and then from there we, then I start to reset their fight or flight response. Uh, as humans, we can't do that automatically, uh, unless we have a, a certain amount of, of training to do that, but I do that, and that's working with the hand under the back in different positions uh, to help to reset that. And most of the people, when that happens, have just a calming effect, and you'll hear, you'll hear the breathing, It'll, it just changes, and it's just like a <sighs> as they're resetting themselves. As I said, humans are virtually the only one that can't do that. If you see a, uh, a gazelle being chased by a leopard and it manages to get away, it'll stand outside the herd and it'll shake backwards and forwards for a while and you can hear sometimes like a breath coming out. That's its resetting its fight or flight response. Then when it's ready, it'll go back into the herd uh, and be calm and just get back on with life again. We don't have that, but I teach you how to do that for yourself. With myself uh, and working with people, what I'm really after is helping them to create exceptional health in their lives. Uh, this is what we want at all levels, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and it covers all areas there. Because I've had the training and the exercise, I have my own gym, I've been the personal trainer, um, I've taught meditation, um, so I show that to the people as well. Um, work with the food to a certain degree, but then if it's people want more, then we have specialized people that work with nutrition on that. One of the biggest things is sleep, and working with the energy helps that, helps people to, to really have a good night's sleep, and sleeping is healing. As we talked about in one of the other episodes, um, every hour before midnight is worth two after. And as uh, Audrey, I think, said, the hours between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., our most beneficial times for sleep for our body to heal. So if we eat too soon before going to bed, then our body is going to be in the digestion mode or it's going to leave that and go into restoration to restore all our cells and to heal our body. That food will be left in our tummy just to rot. So this is why it's important to eat you know, one and a half to two hours before, before we go to bed. The Western medicine but focuses mainly on the, 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 the curing of the, the physical level. With the shamanic energy medicine, we work on all levels, and, and that's really important. Um, and it's working with the, the luminous energy fields, like our aura uh, that we have around us, like a halo we have from there. And uh, when you get uh, more sensitive, you can start to see people's auras and see their energy. You can see the, the jagged outlines, the different colors around them there. And then you can start to see the ones who, especially after a session, they're glowing. You know, it's like a purple blue sort of pinkish haze around them there. It's really nice to see, and they, and they feel that there. But you know, like there's, there's 14,000 diseases that the medical profession uh, has at least on their books at the moment, and most of the, the doctors, poor things, have to, to type that into the, uh, into the computer to find out what it really is. 
So uh, with energy medicine, we're going through the chakra. We start with the energy body, and that's and that's what uh, what we get into. So we're we're releasing the blockages in our chakras, resetting them, and then getting them going again. And I give you the tools also to to keep them unblocked as much as you can. Sometimes um, it can be a little bit tricky, a little bit difficult or challenging to, to keep them unblocked, but with practice it becomes easier and easier. And I have four, five or six different ways that, that you know we can do that and, and I think that's really important. What we're looking to do really is to make our lifespan equal to our health span. So we want our lifespan to equal our health span. We're living longer generally. Yeah? And we want to do that in good health. We don't want to be reliant on you know, others having to look after us or being put into the, into the system you know, um, of the medical system there where we're just really surviving. And I think the indigenous peoples of the world have a, have a, a nicer way of looking after their elderly uh, than most Western societies do. In the Western societies, most people just want to, to put them away suddenly, put them out of sight, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, and, uh, and that's wrong. There's so much wisdom that is lost to the elderly when they pass. And I think that's, that's important to look at. Um, the opportunities that we have with the work that I'm doing is that we have the ability to, to, to age differently. Uh, we're able to, to, to face disease uh, in, a, in a different mind scale because we, we're giving the power away. It's like the, the blue pill, red pill you know, situation there where we give our power away for anything going to the pharmacies, going to the doctor there where our bodies have the ability to, to heal ourselves, to do everything that, that we can. There's so many different ways of doing it there, but we would rather just have a quick fix, and it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't help at all. Uh, and we need to have the choice to be able to be able to die differently, to pass on in, in a different way. And I know most of us would like to pass uh, in our sleep, you know, to, to start our new journey. And uh, when we're looking and, and talking about death, and we'll be having some people coming in to talk about that on some of our episodes coming up, is that it's, it's been shunned. It's, we've been made to, to be fearful of death. And, and for me and a lot of the people that I know, it's not. It's just another part of our journey. And we should be, in a way, looking forward to that. And as, as one of my teachers said, we want to be able to, to, to leave this world alive so we're ready to pass on and, and to move with that. For a lot of us out there, there's a, it's a battle, and the people I'm seeing will say, well, I'm eating well, you know, I'm exercising, doing these things, but I still feel lethargic, I still feel terrible. And yes, they do. Yes, their energy centers are blocked and, and, uh, and not working to their optimum, but, you know, at the moment, we're hearing one or two areas where there's a war going on around us. Horrific, horrific things happening, things that shouldn't be happening. Humans are the worst animals in the world. But there's, at this time, 22 different wars going on around the world. 22 different wars. We're not hearing about all these other ones. And why is that? We have other things happening. We've got the jet streams coming across. Yeah, we're sure we have fine weather, but you know, that's causing the, the air that we breathe to be polluted. We know the chemicals that are going into food, going into the water supplies. So we're facing an, a, a constant battle to be healthy. And we need to be looking to do a, a detox, a cleanse, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, on a regular basis, maybe at least once a month. And we need to, need to look at that. And it's so very important. We're going through the fifth major extinction event at the moment, the fifth major extinction event. That's not just with the animals and things, but you know the human population as well is going through this. And we have to be aware of this. And we can't just point the finger and say, well, no, someone else is going to look after us. No, we have to look after ourselves. It's so very important. We say, well, you know, why isn't the government, why aren't the politicians, why isn't such and us looking after us? You know? We have one finger pointing at them, 
but we have three fingers pointing back at us. It's up to us to take control, to do the things for ourselves. And when I'm working with people, I give them the technique to help themselves, to do the work for themselves there. And we start with meditation. And people come and they say, I can't meditate, oh, it's terrible. You know, you know, I'm sitting down there, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing that, I fall asleep, or, or my back starts hurting, or my mind wanders off. And I say to them, no, you're doing it right, that's right, keep persevering. The videos that are on the, on the YouTube channel, there's about a hundred different meditation videos there. There's something for somebody. There's something for everybody there. But just start with two or three minutes. And you don't have to sit cross-legged in a lotus position. I can't do a lotus position. It's really hard. Uh, but I'm comfortable sitting with my legs crossed as much as they can. And just start with two or three minutes. Work up to four minutes, five minutes. Work with a, to start with, with your breathing. Feel the breath coming in and out of your nostrils. Feel your tummy expanding and contracting. And bring your mind to the now. If your thought starts to wander off, it's okay. Just pull it back in. Come back to the breathing. Come back to a, a basic, a simple, but very powerful, um, the, the word, a mantra is, I am. And just keep saying that. Bring yourself back to your now. Every time you drift off, that's great. It's a learning experience. Slow it down. Bring yourself back to now and start with that. The other ones that I give to the people that I work with is a grounding cord. Going from your root chakra, your number one chakra, visualize it going down into the earth. Make it as wide as your hips. Going down, down to the center of the earth, grabbing hold of the crystalline center there and bringing that down, holding that there. Even scientists are, are proving now that if somebody does this, they can change, the changes in a person can be up to 75% from a stressful, anxious situation just by grounding themselves. It works. Then I get them to visualize the earth energy coming up like waves. I like to visualize like on Canva, when you upload something, there's a little wave on the, on the, on the, on the, on the ball there. So I like to visualize that coming up, coming up through your feet to your knees, up your thighs to your hips, coming into a, a vessel in your first chakra there, and then coming up through the body. So you have your grounding cord, your earth energy. And then I like to visualize a cosmic energy coming down into your head. From the, from the heavens, from the universe, from God, from spirit. And I bring that down the back of my head, down my back, coming up the front, down my arms, and out the top of my head like a, a rainbow fountain, spreading through my aura and having and feeling that. So you have your root, your, your grounding cord, your earth energies, your cosmic energy coming down and just practicing that. And within two or three days, the responses that the people are saying, it works. It works. And they're surprised. And it's so nice to hear, so nice to see. And the work that I'm doing and the work that we're doing, people are doing for themselves, they keep on doing it because it does work. And this is so very important. So really, really important. And as I mentioned sometimes on my post, it's not just the time to know. It's the time to know how. And I'm giving a lot of advice. There's some wonderful people coming onto the podcast giving wonderful advice and really helping people locally and internationally and Pachamama Mother Earth as well. So my approach, my style may not suit everybody, but then there will be somebody there that you will resonate with and that will be so very important. So if you need any information, my contact details are below. If not, then you can look for other therapies or therapists as well around, uh, around where you are. And there's some wonderful, wonderful people doing some good things. So, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Thanking our sponsors, Jim at dreaming.eu and the Boutique Hotel Leonardo for putting us up. Thank you very much and I look forward to catching up with you all really, really soon.